Climb and Jazz Portland started with people from Portland Central America Committee that went to and were aware of the Cochabamba meeting. Uh, the Cochabamba uh, followed the, the mess in Copenhagen that did nothing. And uh, so the Bolivian government, the, the movement, movement for so to socialism government in Bolivia um, decided that the third world, the third world in, was just everybody, Africans and Latin Americans were totally freaked at Copenhagen. So, so uh, Evo Morales put on this, and a bunch of other people put on this huge conference in Cochabamba, Bolivia. That's the place where the where Bechtel tried to tried to seize their water, and people took it back. So, uh, so then people from the Portland Central America Solidarity Committee, which is now all of America, um, picked up on that and decided that that uh, climate change was a really important issue for, for their work. So they formed the, client, the Climate Justice Coalition, which has kind of morphed into Climate Justice Portland. What it believes and what it does, it believes that, um, that we need to be addressing the root causes of climate change, so we need to move beyond thinkings of lifestyle choices, we need to move beyond the idea of changing your light bulb is going to solve our problems, we need to be looking at what's really causing climate change, we need to be addressing industrial pollution, we need to be addressing the role that our nation is playing, and US-based corporations are playing in changing the climate of the, and the ecology of the planet. So we want to, so that's our role is to look at the, at the root causes. And then secondly, building off of what Dave said, is to think about who's being most directly affected by this, right? Who are the people on the front lines of climate change? So um, we look to the global south, um, people whose islands are disappearing, who entire populations of people are migrating, to uh, whose uh, agricultural economies are being completely devastated by climate change, and looking to leadership from them. And the solutions that Dave mentioned are the things that are inside that booklet came out of the Cochabamba People's Accord for how can we really get at root cause solutions, and how can we take direction from those most directly affected, right? We're talking about forcing developing countries to stop putting carbon into the atmosphere. We're talking about agriculture and agribusiness being eliminated, monoculture being eliminated and going back to small scale farming and producing. We're talking about, um, you know, changing the way that we produce energy. So these are really big concepts and what Climate Justice Portland does is we um, bring the, the international perspective to the table and we bring uh, together people who want to work on uh, issues of justice within climate change, right? So justice is the concept that those most directly affected by the issue should be at the forefront leaders of the issue. So we bring people together in Portland who want to work on that concept. So labor, environmental groups, people working on free trade agreement issues, people working on international solidarity work, all the different kinds of groups coming together to have a space to organize from and organize um, a movement of people to force these changes to happen. So those are, like, conceptually, that's what we do. Um, what that looks like in everyday life is that we have educational presentations that we do with other organizations to talk about how their issue is connected to climate change. So the, the idea is that climate change actually is a part of every issue, right? It's totally connected because it's the ecology of the planet and everything is connected to that. So we work with groups who aren't necessarily thinking that they're a climate group, right? They're like, oh, I'm a labor union. Why does climate matter to me? I work with public sector employees in the state capitol. So we go and we, you know, we want to do presentations and educational work to talk with people about the fact that climate affects all of us and that we all have a role to play in this um, from the perspective of targeting the root causes of the problem. Uh, so that's what we do. We do educational presentations. We, um, you know, come out to events like this and bring the, that perspective to the table. Um, we also uh, have a we work with groups to demand, to do demands um, around jobs. We think that really one thing to target and mitigate climate change would be doing full employment, having access to millions of people doing solar jobs or you know whatever sort of green jobs, like true green jobs are. That that would not only solve the economic crisis that we're facing, but it would also solve move towards mitigating the climate crisis that we're facing. So. Um, 
Yeah, so those are some of the things that we do around town. We're sort of new and getting started, um, and right now we're really focused on education and then action. There's a big movement to start small farms, and people are, you know, they're robbing the family store to start a farm and buy land and, and, uh, and start community supported agriculture is a really big thing. So it's uh, a local food, the whole local food yeah, is dependent yeah. on local small farms. So it's it's already happening without without really any subsidies or help from the government or anybody else. And it is an issue with large uh, corporations who focus on agriculture um, and also the techniques and tactics that they use to choke and kill small farmers, quite literally Monsanto, um, a lot of the larger ag businesses, uh, Cargill's, um, and they're heavily focused on trying to promote false solutions such as biofuels, trying to figure out a way that they can make more money by turning in what could feed people into something that just keeps pushing the status quo. Um, it's, as, as a way to get to that point, we're just trying to keep applying pressure to those organizations, to those corporations. Small farmers, have, we've been, people have been farming for thousands and thousands of years. We don't need to subsidize it, we just need to change what our system has kind of morphed what we see is the only option to. Um, and one direct thing that we can do is, I mean, the subsidies that we, we subsidize agribusiness right now, we spend right. millions and millions of dollars, so we need millions. to stop doing that, basically. We need to stop subsidizing agribusiness and use that money for a better purpose. It not only destroys small farmers here in the U.S. Um, who are not eligible for those subsidies or who cannot compete with the prices, but it destroys small farmers and every other nation in the world, right? We see that happening in Latin America and in Mexico in a really intense way. So I mean that's one just really clear place where we could we don't we don't even have to subsidize small farmers, we can just even the playing field, you know, and stop subsidizing agribusiness. That's one thing that we advocate and other folks advocate. Well, and one thing just tying into that that a lot of people don't realize is that our trade policies you guys heard of NAFTA and CAFTA and those kind of trade agreements? Well, right now, President Obama is trying to pass more of those same kind of agreements that allow for the kind of subsidies to undercut uh, farmers in their own countries from being able to compete and sell their product. So what has happened as a result of NAFTA over the last 15 years is that as many as 2 million farmers have been forced off their land because we, uh, we pay taxes which subsidize not small farmers but huge agribusiness like Kerry was saying and allows them to sell grains under for under what uh, the people in their own country can make a living out. So yeah, that would definitely level the playing field if we change those policies to a fair trade model rather than this free trade model which is basically free for corporations to exploit workers. That's what the free part is.